All right, you got your marker lights to indicate light, uh, the height, length, and width of the truck. Indicator lights indicate that this is a commercial vehicle. Next, we're looking at our windshield. Make sure it's not missing any pieces or make, make sure it's working properly. No scratches, no cracks. Make sure it's cleaned at all times and no illegal stickers. Next, our windshield wipers. Make sure there's no missing parts that may damage or scratch the windshield. Make sure the wiper blades are not torn. Moving down, we've got directional lights, left and right. And there also are four-way flashers. Make sure they're working. Make sure the lenses are not scratched and make sure there's no burnt out bulbs. Amber up front, red on the rear. Next, we got our headlights. Low beam for city, high beam for country only. And this truck doesn't have them, but if you have fog lights, make sure they're only used in foggy conditions only. Moving over to the side of the truck, we... Uh, this is a regular cab over, but um, there's three different fluids we need to make sure they're at their proper levels, checking for their proper levels, and we're looking at motor oil, power steering fluid, and the coolant or water level. We're moving down here, we got several belts down here. There's four belts that we're going to be looking, or several belts that we're going to be looking at. We got our air compressor belt, alternator, water pump. Um, and power steering belt. They can't be cracked, loose, or worn. Um, and they can't be too tight or too uh, too loose. Make sure there's at least three quarters of, three quarters of an inch of play by pushing on the center of them. If they're too tight, they could damage the component. If they're too loose, the component might not work correctly. So um, we're also checking. Uh, Listening for air leaks and checking for power steering fluid leaks or any oil leaks on the hoses. Hoses can't be cracked, bulging, or leaking and make sure the hose clamps on both ends are nice and tight. After that we're also looking for um, uh, uh, any leaks of the oil or any of the fluids. We're going to make sure we check on the ground for any of those leaks. If there's any leaks on the ground it indicates something is leaking. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go ahead and move to our shock absorber right here. Make sure you see it. There's a nut on the top and a nut on the bottom. Make sure those are tight and secure to the chassis. Make sure it's not cracked, bent, or welded. And make sure there's no oil leaking on the shock absorber, which indicates that it's worn and it must be replaced immediately. Next, we got our steering box right here. There's power steering fluid uh, lines coming in and out of it. Make sure there's no cracks, cuts, or bulges on those hose lines. Make sure the pressure clamps are secured on both sides. And make sure that there's no leaks on the ground. It's also made out of metal, so no cracks, bends, or welds. And make sure it's well secured to the chassis with the tight, secure bolts. We got our steering linkage here that connects to the wheel and the axle. Make sure that is free of cracks, bends, and welds. Make sure the bolts are tight and secure. And also make sure that the joints are well lubricated. Moving down to our spring hangers. Are these spring hangers here. It goes along the line of the chassis. Make sure that's free of cracks, bends, and welds. It's also secured to the chassis with nuts and bolts, and those have to be tight and secure. Looking down at our these springs, make sure they're free of cracks, bends, and welds. Make sure we have a full set. And also make sure that the leaf straps are all present and none are missing. Going down over here, we got our U-bolts. Make sure those are free of cracks, bends, and welds. They got bolts on the bottom. Those have to be tight and secure. Between that and leaf springs, you see a mounting pad, and that has to be present, free of cracks, bends, and welds, and it has to be present, um, has to be in proper working order. Moving down over here, we got our brake chamber, and that has to be well secured to the chassis. It's also made out of metal, or well secured to the axle. I'm sorry, well secured to the axle. Made, it's made out of metal, so no cracks, bends, or welds. We're looking at our slack adjuster right here, and there's an airline coming out of it. And that airline has to be free of cuts, bulges, or leaks. And we're listening for air leaks since it's an airline. Both pressure clamps on both sides have to be tight and secure. Best way to check uh, the slack adjuster, see if it's an adjustment, make sure that the brakes are off. We pull out, and if it's more than one inch of play, we need to make sure that we adjust it. A 9 16 inch wrench, full turn to the right, or clockwise. 
quarter turn counterclockwise, we'll put that slack adjuster into adjustment. Next, we got our brake chamber, or that's part of the brake chamber, but our brake chamber, you got a um, brake drum right here. It's made out of metal, no cracks, bends, or welds. We're looking for brake dust, or brake, um, two colors of dust. White means it overheated and a fire extinguisher was used. Uh, a black powder substance means that it's metal to metal rubbing. And uh, another thing we're checking for is that we're also looking for uh, um, our brake pads. No less than a quarter inch of uh, brake pad life should be permitted. No less. And other than that, it needs to be replaced. <clears throat> We're going to be uh, looking at our hub seals on the outside, or the axle seals on the inside and outside. If you're leaking any oil or grease, that means that they are worn and they must be replaced immediately. Oh. Next, we got our wheel here, our front, uh, our front wheels. Um, the front wheels have to have four thirty seconds of an inch of thread left on them. Recaps are not permitted on the front. Also, make sure that they're free of cuts and bulges and PSI must be between 85 to 100 PSI. We're listening for air leaks from the valve stems. Moving out, we got our rim here. It's made out of metal, no cracks, bends, or welds. Lug nuts, we must have a full set. Make sure that they're tight and secure. If there's any rust between any of the lug nuts, that means or indicates that they are loose. <clears throat> Moving out here, we're gonna go ahead and look at the out cab of this, this truck. We got our door, make sure it opens and closes properly and it's secured when we close it. We got our mirrors, it has to be free of scratches and cracks, no missing parts. Make sure it's well adjusted and clean at all times. Next we got our emergency cab here, make sure there's an up to date fire extinguisher, three emergency reflector triangles and spare fuses. Going over here, I want to knock this out of the way because sometimes we forget about it, but we got these little steps. These are called your catwalks. Catwalks have to be free of oil, water, any moisture that could that could cause self injury. After that, we're going to go ahead and move on to our gas tank. It has to be free of leaks, dents, and has can't be uh, leaking any fuel on the ground. There's also a fuel crossover line that connects to the other fuel line. Make sure that it's free of cuts, bulges, and leaks, and that both clamps on both sides are connected and secured. Make sure that the fuel straps are connected to the chassis and well secured. And make sure that our fuel cap is tight and secure, which it's not. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and move on. We got our battery box in the back here. This is usually located on the side of the frame or in certain different locations, but in this cab over, it's located in the back. Make sure that the battery, battery terminals are free of sh bare wires. Make sure that the battery fluid is at its proper level. Make sure all terminals are clean and it's well secured to either the chassis or the back right here. <clears throat> Next we got our chassis of the truck. It's made out of metal, no cracks, bends, or welds. No missing membranes or cross membranes. And if there's any nuts and bolts that connect to them, make sure they are tight and secure. Beneath that we got our drive shaft. Make sure that the joints are well lubricated, that it's straight and true. No, no cracks, bends, or welds that are um, allowed and also make sure that um, it's well centered. Moving out here, I'm going to go ahead and look at our, our fifth wheel. Our fifth wheel is made out of metal. We got our pickup apron and our platform. Make sure they're well greased and lubricated. And no cracks, bends, or welds are allowed on either the platform or the pickup apron or the fifth wheel. If it's an adjustable fifth wheel, make sure that it's in the lock position and that all all the um, nuts and bolts are tight and secure. There should be no space between the platform and the apron and that the locking jaw has to be around the kingpin and the release hand um, release mechanism has to be in the lock position. Moving out we got our electrical, our airlines. Our electrical has to be free of bare wires or no wires, no bare wires should be showing. Also, blue, um, that's our black line. Blue line is our service air brakes, and red is our um, emergency air brakes. Also, make sure that they're not too long or not too short. If they're too long, they could either rub up against the, um, the exhaust or the frame, or they could wrap up on the, the drive shaft. 
or if they're too short, they could um, disconnect if you're um, doing a steep turn or uh, doing a really um, sharp angle turn. Uh, make sure that the O-rings on the glad hands are tight and secure. Moving on, we got our exhaust. Make sure there's no um, no exhaust fumes that are leaking. Make sure it's well secured to the, the cab and chassis. Make sure there's no holes. Make sure that there's no missing parts on it. Again, make sure there's no holes that will leak any ex poisonous exhaust fumes. That's important. Moving back over here, we got our headboard. Make sure the laminate's all intact. We got reflectors and lights. Make sure the front lights are amber, rear lights are red. All lenses need to be clean. Make sure that there's no burnt out bolts. And also make sure that the, uh, make sure uh, that uh, it's all intact and in, in the proper working order. Moving back over here, we got our drives, or the, the rear of the tractor, our wheels. It's the same inspection. I'm not going to go fully detail with it to save time. It's the same inspection as the front with a couple new details. Uh, since there's two slack, um, two slack adjusters, instead of one inch, it's two inch. Two inches. Um, so, again, you have to check for the slack adjusting. Make sure that the brakes are off, so if it pulls out more than an inch, again, a full turn to the right quarter turn to the left with the 9 16th inch wrench with the brakes off we'll put it into adjustment uh, the tires recaps are permitted on the back again uh, 2 seconds of an inch of thread depth to be is permitted on the back no less than that and again the wheels the brakes and the suspension is the same inspection as the front we're going to move on to the back over here we got our mud flaps make sure they're not too long not too short make sure the bolts and Nuts are all tight and secure, none missing and broken. We got our stop lights in the back, make sure they're red, the lenses are clean and no burnt out bulbs. Moving over here, this is our landing gear. Make sure the cross members and support members are all tight and secure, no cracks, bends or welds on them. And make sure it's tight and secure to the chassis. Make sure it's in the good up position and that the, um, the, roll, the rolling handle on the side is in its proper secured place. Underneath we got our cross members of the trailer. They're all underneath here. Sometimes we got airlines running through them and we are listening for air leaks and also make sure that the airlines don't have any cracks, bends or uh, cracks, bulges or leaks and make sure that both clamps on the both sides and ends are tight and secure. Oh, they're gonna do a test. Moving up, this is the side of the trailer. We got reflectors. Make sure the reflectors up front are amber and the ones in the rear are red. No missing lenses or crack lenses. Make sure there's no burnt out bulbs. Make sure all the lenses are clean at all times. Laminate has to be intact at all times. No missing laminates. And if there's a side door, make sure it's secured and uh, tight and secure when it's, um, and it opens and closes properly. <clears throat> Now we're going to move to the rear of the truck. Again, this axle is the same inspection as the front, the drives, and your rears are the same exact thing, except for one huge difference. The one huge difference is that this has a, um, a torque bar in the back over here. I'm not sure if you see it. The torque bar keeps the tractor and trailer aligned. No cracks, bends, or welds on the torque bar. Again. Uh, tires, no, um, no bulges, no air leaks, no cracks. Make sure that there has, there's at least two thirty seconds of an inch of thread life and recaps are permitted. Like I was saying, the suspension, the wheels, the brakes, they're all the same as the front. It has one single slack adjuster, so that means the slack adjuster is only one inch of play with the brakes off. And again, a, a 9 16 inch wrench, full, full turn to the right quarter turn to the left to put it into adjustment. Moving to the rear of the truck, we got mud flaps here. Make sure the nuts and bolts are tight and secure. The mud flaps not too long, not too short, and that they're in their proper working order. Looking at the back, we got our rear of the truck. Make sure all the lenses and reflectors are all clean, no cracks, no burnt out bulbs, and none missing. Make sure uh, that they work properly. Also, we have the door, make sure it rolls up and down properly and it's tight and secure when you lock it. We got our DOT bar, no cracks, bends, or welds, make sure that it's in place. And also make sure that 
<clears throat> that the reflectors and reflection stripes are in place in proper working order. That concludes the exterior inspection of the DMV DMV uh, DMV Class A inspection commercial driver's li for the commercial driver's license. Also, we're making sure we're also making uh, make sure that before you end the inspection, ask the inspector if you, um that can. Uh, did you want me to continue on to the right side of the truck because you might miss something and they might actually give you like a second chance Yeah, go ahead and go on this on the other side of the truck and redo the inspection because you might have missed something and they're just giving you a second chance So if you got everything down, they'll just say oh, yeah Let's just go on and you'll basically go on to your road and road testing. So yeah Yep Anyways, uh, I did that all on the top of my head if I missed anything again I'll probably do some edits on it and yeah, anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.